<laughs> Fort Meade Garrison Commander Colonel Chris Nyland and military working dog Marco filming a virtual first pitch, which will be shown at the Baltimore Orioles game on May 15th, Armed Forces Day. Hello and welcome to Meet Week. I'm Brian Spann. Also this week, Brood 10 is coming. Kimbro expands vaccination eligibility and our regularly scheduled look at what's going on at the Transition Assistance Office. These stories and more, but first, the reopening of installation services is always a hot topic at the bi-weekly town hall. At or near the top of those is the status of the swimming pools. At this week's town hall, Colonel Nyland announced that a plan has been submitted for approval to open the pools. But uh, right now there is a plan in place um, and we hope to reopen those um, on or about Memorial Day, uh, but we've got to get through one final uh, wicket of approval um, before we are ready to uh, make that formal announcement along with the restrictions that will be in place when we do reopen those pools. Because they will, because although we intend to reopen them, they won't be reopened like they were prior to COVID. As always, please be aware that issues like this are always subject to change, so please routinely check our social media platforms and the Digital Garrison app for the latest information. Meanwhile, in a related story, Kimbrough Ambulatory Care Center announced this week that they're now offering walk-in COVID vaccinations to all DOD ID card holders 16 years and older. This includes those enrolled in the Johns Hopkins U.S. Family Health Plan. Walk in or by appointment, it's your choice, Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the McGill Training Center. In other news, if you were living in Maryland in 2004, you no doubt remember the hum of billions of cicadas emerging from 17 years of inactivity. Well, get prepared. Reports are already coming in on the emergence of Brood 10. We spoke with James Butler, an entomologist with the Army Public Health Command Atlantic, about Brood 10 and what you can expect. Brood X is... Uh one subset of a species of periodical cicadas. Uh, it is 17 year cicada, so there are 17 different uh, brood groups. Uh, the brood is basically the, the year emergence of the cicada. Brood X or brood 10 is the biggest one by far compared to all the other uh, broods. They're not going to be just completely covered but there will be cicadas you know, around uh, especially wherever there's a, a wooded area because they're emerging coming from trees so if you're in an area where there's not a whole lot of trees you're probably not going to have quite as many um, but it's not going to be like clouds of them in the sky uh, i read one estimate upwards of one and a half million in an acre uh, in high high density areas um, now there are some websites out there if, if you're interested in kind of getting an idea of where they might be higher populations. Uh, Cicada Mania is a website, it's .com, uh, that you can get on and uh, get a lot of in good information on cicadas. You can look at maps. Uh, there are some maps data based off of the 2014 or 2013 emergence, the 2004 emergence. To kind of give us an idea of where they're probably going to be. As an entomologist, it's very exciting. We, you know, entomologists, you know, we, we get into really fun things with bugs. Uh, with this, there's so many that are going to be coming out. Um, it's a uh, it's going to be fun. Elsewhere, the Office of the Secretary of Defense has authorized a permanent expansion of exchange shopping privileges to DOD and Coast Guard civilian employees. The change was made effective on May 1st. However, please note that tobacco and alcohol are not included in the expansion of shopping privileges. Finally, on this edition, the Army's annual Twilight Tattoo is an action-packed military pageant featuring the 3rd U.S. Infantry Regiment, the Old Guard, the U.S. Army Band, Pershing Zone, and Fort Meade's very own U.S. Army Field Band. The performances are usually performed live in Washington, but this year are being produced as an eight-part series which began this week. And that's Mead Week for this week. I'm Brian Spann. For everyone at Mead TV and the Fort Mead Public Affairs Office, have a great weekend and a great Mead Week.